Hey guys, this is a follow up on the RoboRace time data tutorial. Because you can do so much more data viz in GeoLayers. So, let's jump into this. We're going to create a new map camp and call it speed. For now, 30 seconds are okay. I'm going to choose the seamless texture imagery here now and you might not really see it but it defaults to sort of like a grid. Now you can see this better. I'm going to double click the feature to fit my view. Now let's import track bounds. By hitting return we can rename this. I call it bounds. I'm going to drag this on top here and remove the rest. Now we have all the data we need. Let's create shape layer styles. I'm going to duplicate my first track style here. Call this bounds. I'm going to remove the dashes, set the width to 2 pixels and the opacity to probably 30%. I'm going to hit apply and draw my bounds to the map. Let's double check our settings here. We don't need auto stroke width, but we can simplify the geometry. I'm going to quickly hit finalize to see our grid imagery in the right resolution. I want this to be more subtle, so I simply reduce the opacity here. 25 seems okay. Now we do have this time data here. You can see it since this checkbox is available here. I'm going to select the car style holding control that this drop down keeps being open and I'm going to uncheck simplify geometry to have my track as detailed as possible. Now with the feature selected I click animate feature path. Now you can see that this animation is only 10 seconds long. That's because our comp is only 30 seconds. The original timing of the feature would be like 2 minutes end. And since this comp duration is shorter than the uh, original animation, GeoLayers is going to use the default animation duration. This can be set in the preferences right there. See it's 10 seconds. Also if this animation is only 10 seconds the relative timing is kept in place. So we have the faster parts of the track and the turns are very slow. Now that's cool but I would like to visualize the speed even better. Since we imported a CSV file we have points of each coordinate here. Oh, You can see this here. And the fact that all these points look like a line if we size them in the right, with the right radius is pretty good for me. First I'm going to select the feature collection of the points and hit feature properties. And in my collective feature properties I'm going to see the values of all the point features containing in that feature collection. And you see that there is a speed value. And there is a minimum and a maximum value that I can use. So we're going from approximately 8 meters per second to 50 meters per second. So let's create a shape layer style for this. I'm going to hit edit styles. I'm going to duplicate this style here, call it speed. I'm going to increase the width to maybe 20 pixels here. And I'm going to data drive the color property here. So we do now need the property name which we just um, investigated. It is speed and we need a value range and we know that this goes from 8 to 50 approximately. So I'm going to choose a green color here. And I'm going to choose something red here. 
And in the middle, I'm gonna set this to 25. I'd like to have an orange color. Great, let's hit apply. And if I expand my feature collection here, I will see the little thumbnails here of my style. And since the color is changing, my data-driven style works. Now with the feature collection selected, I hit draw features. And it's gonna tell me, oh, that's like 40, 15 features. That's quite a lot. Uh, but I really want to draw this, even if it slows down my comp a bit. Now, since we have some gaps here, uh, the 20 pixels width was not enough. But with the layer selected, I can simply increase it here. So I'm gonna set this to 120, which looks good to me. Now, all I need to do is take this layer drag it under my animated feature path and use the animated feature path as a track mat. And when we preview this, we get this nice gradient color here, visualizing the speed of the car. Now we can go even crazier with this point data. So let's have a look what information is inside our point data here. So we have an acceleration forward, which would be pretty cool, but we also have a lateral acceleration. Now this sounds very nice. We have a minimum value of minus 8.5 and a max value of 6.9. Let's keep that in mind for acceleration lateral. So I'm gonna create a new style here. Let's duplicate the one we just had. But now we're going to use the property acceleration lateral. And we're going from minus 9 to 7. And we're going to have a different color at 0. So I'm going to pick black here. And something more blue on this side. Now we're going to do another thing. We're going to data drive the width. So let's copy it the property name and paste it here. And here we're going from minus nine to nine and I'm adding zero in the middle and the width of my stroke. So the size of the point is gonna be zero when the lateral acceleration is zero and it's gonna increase to the negative values as well as to the positive values. So I'm gonna use 50 pixels here. I'm gonna use the blue color here just to visualize this a bit more and call this acceleration lateral. Let's hit apply and you see there's stuff going on here. So let's see how that looks. So with the points feature collection selected I'm gonna hit draw features. Now, I think that's some very exciting examples on how to visualize data with G-Layers. And I hope you think so too and you like the tutorial. To get your hands on the data and the footage, simply download the sample project. Thanks for watching. Bye.